Gibb is uh, well known to many of you as the, um, the leader, the, the president, it's president? president, president of Women Alive. Looking terrific in a nice bright red coat. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome, Margaret. Thank you. Uh, w w Women Alive has, uh, has been around uh, for uh, some time. I mentioned off the top, Nell Maxwell is the founder. Uh, how many years now has it been uh, oh, in operation? It started in 1973. Yeah, so we're talking mm -hmm. 26 years. Exactly. Um, you basically, uh, as I understand it, uh, bring women together in major conferences across mm -hmm. the country. You have a, a national magazine. But tell us a little bit about the scope of your work. Well, our whole mandate is to try to uh, equip and encourage women to be all that they can be for God. Mm -hmm. Get them out of their comfort zones, help them believe in themselves and their call. Mm -hmm. Not fulfill roles, mm -hmm. but fulfill their calling, which is a difference. And then just empower them to uh, make sure that they are impacting their sphere of influence wherever they live and be Jesus light in communities. And so you, you hold uh, conferences uh, regionally, provincially, yes. nationally, all of the above? All of the above. We do conferences, we do um, day events like Just the Word with Precept Ministry, which is a four Bible studies in one day. Uh, we do some partnership uh, things with Faith Life Financial. Uh, we have a girls program that's dynamic called IE Inspire Excellence. And uh, that program is really very, very good and needed in our day. You know what? I want to talk to you about your personal journey, mm -hmm. uh, being recently bereaved and some of the things that are happening in Mark Gibb, the person's life. But why don't we take a quick look at uh, a promo that you've brought us uh, that uh, sort of gives an overview of Women Alive. Live is the national network that inspires and equips Canadian women. We celebrate women just like you from every walk of life. Women who make a meaningful difference in our communities, our nation, and our world. We offer a variety of events with interactive learning experiences that equip and encourage women to live out their faith and fulfill their God-given potential. Women Alive is passionate about equipping today's leaders to excel and empowering tomorrow's leaders to dream. We are dedicated to nurturing the next generation through IE Girl Inspire Excellence with a vision to see every teen girl become all they were meant to be. Women Alive magazine is Canada's Christian magazine for women. We address current social and cultural issues, interviews, and meaningful features that are relevant to today's Canadian women. Connect with us online at womenalive.org, your source for free articles, resources, shopping, and more. Womenalive.org is the place where Canadian women connect. We'd love to have you join us at our next event in your area. Women Alive? Touching hearts, changing lives. So there you go, a terrific uh, national ministry. Now, Mark, uh, people see you, you know, uh, you're a leader, you're up front, uh, you're uh, very high profile. What about Margaret Gibb, uh, the woman? You, two years ago, you were in Uganda. Mm -hmm. uh, with w one of your kids or both? Both my children. Both your kids mm -hmm. uh, on, uh, doing a pastor's conference? Yes. And you got horrible news. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Well, we, uh, my husband was not well. Um, he was in the hospital, but we were more than guaranteed that he would be okay. Bob was insistent that we complete this trip and take this pastor's conference. My son is lead pastor in Bethel Sarnia Church and he organizes pastor's conferences in Uganda. And this had been in the works for about a year. And Tim wanted myself and our daughter, my, his sister, my daughter, to go. And so we had planned this, and Bob was very insistent that we go. And of course, he landed up in the hospital, and so the debate was, um, do I stay behind? Do we cancel this trip? And he said, no, you've got to fulfill. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. And the doctors told us the very same thing. In fact, they said to me, you're so stressed out, you need to go and do something. Stressed out because you've been caring for him. Yes, and he had not been well for, for quite a while. Yeah. 
And um, boy, you learn a lot when you care for someone who's mm -hmm. not well and you see their body deteriorating. Their mind is great, but their body's deteriorating. Mm -hmm. So we did go to Africa and we called him every day and talked to him and he wanted to know what we were doing and we'd report all the fun things that what were happening and how people were coming to the Lord and he mm -hmm. thrilled and all that. And then one day we called him on a Thursday and this was just the day before our conference would end. Um, and we spoke to him and he sounded a bit tired and I commented about that. The next day when I called, um, he answered the phone and he was very slurred in speech. And he said, uh, I did not have a good night, you better talk to the nurse. And she said, he may have had a stroke, we don't know what's wrong with him. Call the next day, which was now gonna be Saturday. Saturday, she said, he's non-responsive. She said, I wanna level with you, he may have a week or 10 days to live, which put me in a real tailspin. Mm. And then the next day I called, we were now in Nairobi, and um, I called again and she said, the first thing she said to me was, have you ever picked out, a f did you pick out a funeral home? I said, funeral home, no. I said, we haven't even thought about a funeral home, and she said, he may have only a couple days to live. Mm. So here we are in Nairobi, my two children and I, and you want to run home, but you can't. It's a Sunday, and as you know, in Nairobi, everything's mm -hmm. closed yeah, up. Yeah. The KLM office is yeah. just closed up. Even in the best of times, to make a sudden change of flight uh, overseas, especially in, in parts of Africa, is almost impossible. Right. So at that moment, of course, we're calling home to try and uh, find a funeral home, get help, get the family at home to incredibly stressful time mm. when your whole body is just screaming with tension. And, uh, and the, the, the big guilt that I had was that I wasn't there for him mm. in his dying moments. And he did die the very next day. We got, we got word, we were, got a message at the hotel to call the hospital and I knew what was going on. And we were in a rinky-dinky cafe <laughs> downtown Nairobi. Mm. You know, not the place to hear that kind of news. Uh -oh. And uh, so from that moment on, uh, we had to deal with the fact that he had gone to be with the Lord and we were miles and miles away. Now, it's, it's, it's tough enough to, uh, and there's Bob there, right? That's Bob, that's my Bob. Yeah, 40 years married, right? 40 years married, yeah. 